Mike. I'm Billy Joe. Trey Cool. And Mike Dern. And we are the Green Day Trio. One day, Mike was at the studio um, by himself, and he wrote a 30-second song, and it had kind of a vaudeville, real bombastic kind of uh, flair to it. I don't know, and I liked it, so I wanted to do one, too. So then I, I, the one that I did, I connected to his, and so we had about 10 minutes. And we were just purely out of having a good time, and just like, you know, let's screw it, let's like make a, let's do a, like a punk rock opera. Kind of musical hot potato, if you know what I mean. The song American Idiot sort of just came about without thinking about any repercussions whatsoever and just sort of the confusion that's going on in sort of American pop culture. And I think that the administration that's in office right now, um, I have a problem with that I don't agree with. It doesn't represent me. Um, I'm just trying to raise a discussion to where I just try to make some sense of it. For me, it's a very American thing to do is to, uh, to write a song like American Idiot. Basically, uh, if you get a treatment that we really like, uh, we follow up with it and just kind of hammer it out back and forth. We really wanted to get somebody uh, for the American Idiot video that who's like ready to like kick ass like we like we think that our record kicks ass and somebody who's like will make us work as hard as, as we expect him to work. I've been a big fan of the Tom Petty video. Uh, oh, Refugee? Was it Refugee? Um, no, it's not Refugee. It's uh... Oh, um... Uh, you Got Lucky. Oh, You Got Lucky. That's the one. Because uh, when I was a kid, you know, I always thought it'd be so cool just to find those rad instruments and, you know, in the middle of this desert. Well, then let's just go with You Got Lucky by Tom Petty. I'm going to have to go with Ugly Kid Joe. I think Ugly Kid Joe should be reunited, and uh, then they could be um, selling out stadiums with the Rolling Stones opening up. What do you think? I think that makes sense because they were highly underrated. Absolutely. Yeah, the world will be a better place again once Ugly Kid Joe comes back. Them the breaking, scene. Yeah, them breaking up really never, never gave them a chance to realize their full potential. Absolutely. Cats in the Cradle. Yeah. You know. Get it on. I would choose rock and roll um, over sex and drugs because it seems like anytime you're doing the rock and roll thing, the sex and the drugs are gonna kind of immediately follow anyway. Absolutely, you can't have rock and roll without the other two. So mm -hmm. it's sort of a, a loophole, catch twenty two, rock and roll. Rock and roll. The only bummer is without the other two, the songs might be kind of bland. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I think that those are just sort of There's attachments. There's romance in there somewhere. Absolutely. Uh, well, the the title comes from, there's an old uh, James Dean photo where he's uh, walking uh, in New York and he, you know, he's in a, uh, just underneath it says Boulevard of Broken Dreams. It's a great photo of him. So that's uh, where I sort of nicked the title from. And um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a real place in my heart, man. <laughs> there's this road and it's just going right up here. It's going past my nipple. Kind of it's all over it. Yeah. Yeah, well, you you kind of fall so, like so far into it that you kind of after, at, right immediately after you're done with it, and you kind of like. I think I think we just need to take a step away from it and uh, reaffirm or reconfirm the fact that it's good. Well, I don't know. We do what it for ourselves. We're, We're selfish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you can't do anything about it. I mean, and it's like I'm not. If that, you could like kill yourself thinking about it, if you think about things like that, it's like For, hell with it. I have a broken heart. Oh. oh, I hear a little violin. Wanted it an irritating punk rock band that would disturb the neighborhood, and well, they call us. <laughs> uh, it's us in a nutsack. I, I mean, a nutshell. Yeah, uh, what did you do? Probably had to take a dump. I, I crap my pants like the first verse. Pinching and running, my man. <laughs> American Idiot came from just watching news channels like Fox, CNN, MSNBC. When the war first started, there was like these Geraldo type of uh, journalists that were traveling around in tanks with the military going into Baghdad. And reality television were kind of coming together at the same time, which was confusing and uh, kind of terrifying. And then you get all the like, commercials that are in between. So it kind of kind of came from that, where you're just trying to find your individuality in, in all of the confusion. It's sort of up for anyone's interpretation of who the American Idiot is. It could be me, it could be the President of the United States. Oh, uh, my name is Billy. I play in Green Day. They, they asked us, I guess, and uh, we said okay. And well, at first we didn't really know what, what to think when we went into it because, you know, it, was, it wasn't really, you know, so you can't really, you know, you know, remake what happened in 1969, of course. But uh, we went in and ended up we having a pretty good time and it ended up turning into like a human disaster at the same time. So, <laughs> Oh, just because what happened to Mike, Mike getting beaten up by the bouncer. And um, 
No, the, he didn't jump in the, the the bouncer just jumped on top of him and uh, knocked Mike's teeth out. So he I have no idea. He was just a, he may he thought that Mike was one of the kids in the audience, but regardless, you're not supposed to attack anyone like that. So I mean, I guess Mike always just says better him than someone in the audience. So. Yeah, oh, we had a really good time with that. I mean, just turning instead of a, a rock concert, it just turned into a big like a big mudslinging fest, and it was good. It was good fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, it, it basically it probably came from Bugs Bunny. Hey, Originally came from Bugs Bunny. I think so. Yeah. yeah, but Billy, yours is going to grow up and you go, my dad drops his drawers on stage every night you know and something? shows the world his <laughs> penis. The other day, he's got, he had this, he's on this uh, trampoline and then he pulled his pants down. And you went, yeah. I, well, my wife was I like, was, oh, God, he looked just like you. <laughs> <laughs> and, just, and just jumping up and down and he was like, look at me, look at me, look at me. That's so, you. Three that's years what ago. she was talking about because I was, the camera was on my head and right. I remember the, you know, the big old screens that were on the side trying to jump up to get my ass in the, in the picture. So it was just like this butt like going up and down like this. <laughs> it looked like Pac-Man sideways trying to like, clip over it. I think that people really miss like, you know, guitar based rock and roll, rock operas especially. There's a lot of bands out there that have the ability to really challenge themselves, but um, for whatever reason, maybe they're playing it safe right now. Maybe some people are afraid to have opinions or just take a stance in any direction. I think we always uh, pride ourselves as being a, a, a punk band, no matter what. It's become sort of a main source of our uh, education and inspiration, but you know, one thing that's really important for us is to keep growing as individuals and um, musicians. We've been together. When did you guys meet each other? Ten years ten old. Years old. And they're ten years old, and we've they're never six now. We've, we've <laughs> never beat the dish out of each other, and the sex is still good. What's good about these guys is that there's nobody on this planet that I can play with to this caliber. Um, what's bad is that I'm always at band practice early because I want to start playing, and they're always like five minutes late. Huh? Five. Come on, you're giving me too much credit. <laughs>